Westchester Baptist Church. Good to see all you smiling faces here tonight. How many of you love the Lord? Say amen. Amen. One person loves him. Two people love the Lord. One just out loved louder than the other. We all love the Lord. Amen. He could come at any moment. I am so excited. All the events that are going on around the world, lining right up with this book, it could happen at any moment. So That's right. we better be ready. Amen. Sure. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, we are grateful and thankful for the day that we live in. The thought that perhaps you could come back and rapture us out in our lifetime is just beyond our uh, imagination. I just pray that if that time should happen, that we'll continue to let our light shine in this world and to serve you and to work until you come. If it should not happen, then we look forward to the day when we're absent from the body and present with the Lord. But I just pray tonight that if there's any watching the video that has never trusted you as their Savior, that tonight, before it's eternally too late, that they would do that. And that your Holy Spirit would move here in our auditorium as we study your word. And we give you all the praise for it in Christ's name. Amen. Well, 159 tonight, we'll sing the first and the last. There is power in the blood. Conferences and also had the privilege of meeting new pastors and friends. 
One pastor in particular had been a missionary for many years. He had already retired, but one of the church plants was in desperate need of a pastor, so he went to, uh, back to help. Him and his wife were a huge blessing to me, and they knew it was like visiting churches and starting churches. March was, a, was also a busy month. I had two missions conferences, both in which the other missionaries were friends of mine. I also went to Pensacola, Florida to be with a few churches there. I got to swing by PCC and visit one of my friends who was a member of the church in Fort Worth. Some churches asked me how I'm doing on support. As of March, I have just a little over 50% of what I need to get to Mexico. My desire is to be in Mexico officially by April of May of 2024. I have now started to raise money to buy a truck in Mexico. I am looking to get something that blends in with the rest of the crowd and something that won't break down on me while I drive around. Going from village to village can prove quite difficult in a little car due to the horrible roads. That is why I think it would be best to buy a small 4x4 truck. I pray that by the time I'm ready to be there, I would have raised a sufficient amount of money to buy a reliable small truck. With the decision of building a new building for the IBF, I, my mission agency has changed its address. Anything that is sent must now be sent to this new address. He lists the address here, um, so it's, it's there if we need it. It says, if you need any more information on the change address, please feel free to call or text me at the number located at the top of the prayer letter. I don't know, I know I don't have the space or time to tell of all that we were able to do in my trip to Mexico last December, but I would like to briefly tell you of a man that we met. This man was not able to walk or move his arms due to some kind of nerve damage. They tried many times to get him a wheelchair through the Mexican government, but not, no one, nothing, but has never received it. So we took him a wheelchair and a New Testament. He was so overwhelmed with joy from the simple gift of a wheelchair that he began to cry like a child. Wait till he learns of the gift of God for him. I pray I can go back and spend some more time witnessing to him. Your missionary to the Yucatan Peninsula, Tyler Gates. And then he's got a couple of praises here. One, his dad's operation went well, and he's a little over halfway on his support. And a couple of his prayer requests are funds for a vehicle in Mexico, church meetings for the summer, and for his upcoming trip to Mexico in June. Amen. Also, Mrs. Miller posted on her Facebook page yesterday that they've got the, they had all the kids in the back of the U-Haul. So that crew just filled that U-Haul right up. Monday morning, so I guess tomorrow, they're going to go across the border. Ooh, so amen. she asked that everybody please pray. Yeah as they go across the border for safety and for all that yeah. will take place there. And God can take care of that, no problem at all. So, But you pray for them today and tomorrow and even after they get there. Now, I don't know if I told anybody or not, but when we were over at that building, you know, Brother Lloyd had built the little uh, sound booth that we had over there. He had built it and given it to the church. And the little eight-channel soundboard that we had when we first started – I gave that to Brother Miller when they were here to take with them to Mexico Amen. so they have something to start with. So Amen. we're invested in that way and, and helping that. And we weren't using it, and God just laid on my heart. They needed to let them have it. So Amen. we sent that with them. So well, they had them. every other piece of oh, the sound for that. Yeah, yeah, except for the sound board. So they can tie all that together, and the kids can have their own channel, their own instrument, and just... Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Brother Tim, if you'll come, we'll receive our offering. If you'd ask God's blessing on the offering. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you again for allowing us to be here this evening to hear your word. Pray that you be with this offering and help it to, uh, to do the things that we need to do to, to continue your, your ministry. We just thank you. We love you. And we praise your wonderful name. Amen. Amen. God bless you as you give. testimony that they would like to share tonight. God been good to you, maybe. Or God not been good to you, maybe. Always good. God's always good. All the time, all the time, God is good. 
And every time I get out on the highway and make it back home, I thank the Lord for his goodness. Uh, That's the truth. Even Thursday or Friday in our subdivision, I don't know if it's karma or what, but a young man that's always running up on people and going around people and what have you, I guess, came over the hill and I don't know exactly what happened, but he ended up turning his car, taking out a stop sign and turning his car over in the ditch. He was okay, but the car was towed. And someone said, well, he won't be flying up down the road for a while, so, but thankfully he was okay. So, but uh, just keep praying for one another. Pray for Brother Benalis that uh, somehow we can get a way to get his support to him. Uh, we got January, February, March, but he, we used to mail it, and it was getting stolen, and then we were doing FedEx, and that was costing $75 to $80 to send it. We did MoneyGram, which is good and works, but you have to be able to make contact to give them the, the code and everything so they can go pick it up. So just pray, because uh, I know he said in his letter that a lot of sessions they couldn't go to because they didn't have the funds. In the Philippines, you have to pay before you get your service. You have to pay before you get out of the hospital. Might be a good practice if we had that here, amen. Anybody else got any great blessings? All right. Turn with me this evening to Genesis chapter number 6. We're going to look about how to keep our head above water. And if your head's not above water, if you're underwater, you're going to drown. Amen? Right. And back in the day in Genesis in chapter 6, of course, everybody knows the story of the flood and Noah. But God's creation had rebelled against God. Now, it's, the Bible talks about in the New Testament, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Yeah. I mean, you look at, at, at what we have in the days of Noah and what we have today, and the Lord could come at any moment. Yeah. But even through all the filth and all the stuff back in that day, God said that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And, of course, you know, Enoch walked with God, and he was not. He was taken up. That's a picture of you and I in the rapture, if we get to go up in the rapture. And, uh, of course, Noah and the ark is kind of a picture of us being in Christ. Uh, and there's several symbols, but I want us to, to look tonight and think about uh, God gave a plan to Noah. God's getting ready to destroy everything and everyone. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So the, the ark was a salvation for his family. Him and his wife and his three sons and his three daughter-in-laws. They were all going to be taken up the ark. But it was also for the society. Because that was where God was going to start over again. And then not only that, but for humanity. When they got off the ark, kind of everything began over again. Kind of like a second creation. Uh, but isn't it amazing how God can use a righteous man, someone that will surrender to him and and do his will. The same thing is true for you and I today. If we'll be obedient to God and surrender. And we can find grace in God's eyes today. God can use us like he used Noah. And God wants to use us. And so here in Genesis 6. We see what we call the pre-flood carpenter. Who is going to build an ark. And then we have many years later. Another carpenter. A carpenter of what? Nazareth that came. And so all of these and we don't have time to go into all of the similarities, but we'll get into a few of them tonight of how that the ark and, and, and Christ and Calvary and, and all that kind of ties in uh, from the Old Testament to the New Testament. And so God provided salvation for us through his son, Jesus of Nazareth, who went to the cross and died for our sins. And God provided a way for Noah and his family during that day through the ark. Both of them were made of wood, were they not? And so the ark was not only their salvation back in that day for his family, but it was a shelter from the storm. <laughs> Who is our shelter from the storm today? The Lord Jesus Christ. He is our shelter from the storm. Uh, and they stored all of the, the supplies that they needed aboard the ark to take care of feeding them and feeding their family. And, and we'll get into this in a minute, but it's amazing and you'll see when we get into the dimensions, but uh, it is a type of our complete salvation in Christ. Noah and his family was in the ark, which is a picture of Christ. And you and I today, we are in Christ. Uh, and, and being in Christ keeps us from the judgment to come. 
being in the ark kept Noah and his family from the judgment to come. Uh, Colossians 2.10 says, And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principalities and power. The Bible says that in Matthew that all power is given in heaven and earth unto the Lord Jesus Christ. And so he has all that power today. And, and we have that. 2 Peter 1.3 says, According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. We get our life and our godliness from God through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. And so because Noah was in the ark, his head was above water. He kept his head above water. He was safe. And so I want you to notice, number one, the ark was a place of safety. Now, you and I today, if we are in Christ, we are safe. We are safe from uh, sin. We are Well, we still sin, but we're safe from the punishment of sin. We're safe from uh, what is to come during tribulation. And so in Christ, we have that same safety. But you think about this. Verse number 14, chapter 6. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make of it. Now the word fashion there means this is the, the manner or the design that you should make it after. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of it 50 cubits, and the height of it 30 cubits. Mm -hmm. And a window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above. And the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof, with lower, second, and third stories shalt thou make it. Now, you got to think. There was no Home Depot. There was no Lowe's. There was no uh, whatever these big fancy tool stores are where you run down and get all the tools that you need and stuff. Not toy store, tool store. Or, I mean, he didn't have all of that. And, and you look at the dimensions and everything, and he said the frame was to make the, an ark of gopher wood. Now, gopher wood was kind of like the cypress wood. Uh, it was a good wood. But wood had to be cut down in order to build the ark. I mean, it wasn't just stacked up there. He didn't run down the, the depot and say, drop me off a pallet of gopher wood so I can start building. He had to go out and work and do that whole thing himself. And, and so, but here's the thing. The cross was made of wood. The cross that Christ died on. The wood was constructed. God gives him the plans here. How to make it. How long. How wide. How tall. The window in it. The door in it. It had to be constructed and put together uh, in, a, in a certain fashion. That word fashion means to make into a re required form. And God gave him the design or the blueprint. Now when I was in college, we used to listen to a thing by Bill Cosby on Noah's Ark. It was funny, but it wasn't funny. But, but the word Ark in Hebrew means a chest or a coffin. So technically, he was building a, a coffin or a chest to go hide in, or to, to go put, be put in. It shows the death and burial of the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died and was buried in a coffin, in a tomb. See how these all kind of line up? And because of that, you and I have hope today. Because of the Ark, Noah and his family had hope. They had a safety. Uh, then there was the secret door. Notice it says here in our scripture, let me get back over to that page, it says, a window thou shalt put in the ark, and in, in a cubit shalt thou finish it above, and the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof. And so God has given him the instructions. Uh, the door appears to close from the top to the bottom, kind of like a ramp, I would think, so that the animals could go in, the supplies could go in, and I don't know how, but somehow it had to be where you could get to all three levels. I mean, maybe they had it where they could adjust it, so that you could put it on the first level and load it, the second level, third level, I don't know. But it had to be able to reach all the levels in order to get everything put in there, uh, the animals and what have you. And so, uh, but here's the thing, Noah had no control over the door. God had control of the door. Chapter 7 and verse number 16. Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife and thy sons, and thy sons' wives with thee. I'm in the wrong chapter. Verse 7. 
And verse 16 of chapter 7. And they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. Now, Noah built the ark, Noah put the door in, but God shut the door. Mm -hmm. Now, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute, but, but it was a big door, as we will see. But God had to do it. Salvation is not man opening a door to God. Salvation is God opening a door to mankind. God is the one that took the steps. God is the one that went to Calvary. God is the one that made a way for you and I for salvation. Uh, it's not just about accepting Christ, but it's about Christ accepting us. And God could not accept us in our sin. God had to turn his back on his own son in his sin. And so uh, this door was opened up. Uh, God opened the Red Sea from the top to the bottom, just part of the, the sea, and they went across on dry ground. When Christ died on Calvary, the veil was torn in two from top to bottom, opening the way for you and I to get to God. And so doors are very important. Uh, he made us acceptable uh, to Him. Uh, he opened the door, giving us access to God. When Christ died on that cross and the, the veil was rent, it opened up that we could go directly to God, to our Abba Father. And so today we have direct access to God. Uh, and it showed safety uh, for Noah and his family because when the door was closed, the water couldn't get in. Now the pitch, from all that I've looked at, was the sap from the cypress trees mixed in with all the saw dust. You think there was any saw dust making the ark? All the trees that were cut up and everything. And it was put on the inside and the out. One commentary said it was called slime. And so it resisted the water so that it couldn't get in. And that was how that they used it to keep it afloat, to keep it above water. And so uh, God knew exactly what he was doing. And he, he gave the dimensions to Noah, and Noah built it. And so uh, it, was, it was great that, that God kept Noah above water and protected his family. Uh, and you and I today, if we are saved, we are above water, so to speak. We are saved from persecution. We are saved from... The, the wrath to come. Romans says there is now therefore no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. And so God has, has saved us through Jesus and the ark saved Noah through the, the ark. And God made the ark in the Old Testament to be a type of Jesus. Now, nobody else came to the ark and got on board. The Bible says that they were married and giving married, eating, drinking and having a good time. They weren't focused on. And, and, and Noah's preaching there's a flood coming. Here's the thing. They didn't know what a flood was. They'd never seen a flood. God, back in the day, watered from the deep. would come up and water things. But all of a sudden, one day, when it was all done, it was time to go in. Drops of rain started. Can you imagine being there and thinking, what is that? Ping, ping. And then all of a sudden, the ground breaks forth and water starts coming up. Water starts coming down. And you would think that everybody would say, hey, that old man must have known what he was talking about. The Bible doesn't say that they ran to get into the ark. God shut the door, the floods came, and they all drowned. They all died. Today, God sent his son Jesus Christ to pay our sin debt. It's been paid. All we have to do is come and confess our sins and call on him to come and save us, and he'll do it. But there are still people today that are eating and drinking and marrying and giving and marrying doing all the things that they normally do. They don't think about it. They don't care. But one of these days, the trump of God is going to sound and we're going to be taken out of here and the tribulation is going to start and then they're going to wish that they had listened. Mm -hmm. And when they stand at the great white throne judgment where everything is written down and God opens the books, they're going to remember. Oh, yeah. I remember that day when Tim told me and gave me that track and invited me to get saved. And I told him, ha, that's just a fairy tale. They're going to remember all of that. And maybe what they remember throughout eternity that causes them to be in, in tor torment. I don't know. Something will. But then there was a window. Now the window was a summons to come up. When the boat settled, where did Noah have to go to let the birds out? He had to go up. It was in the roof. And God has given us an invitation. It was 18 cubits on the top of the ark. And 
The Bible talks about later in chapter 8 or 9 where uh, Noah went up and opened the window to let the birds out. I would imagine when it wasn't raining, he probably went up there and opened the window. Because I imagine all them animals, they probably got a little <laughs> up in there. Poor old Christopher today got in his car and turned his AC on and the mouse had died in the filter. Oh boy. And he said, Dad, it's bad. I was thinking about studying this and what it must have been like in the ark. The elephants, skunks. I mean, you got to walk lightly around the skunks in the ark because there's no way out. But you think about that. There's three levels there. Uh, but, but it's a type of a mediator. Uh, we, we look up where? To heaven. Where is Christ? He's seated at the right hand of God the Father. He's our mediator on our behalf. And so the window of heaven was open. And so it summons us to come to the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. It summons us to come to God for prayer and to pray and, and to seek His uh, way. And, and through prayer and through salvation, we keep our heads above water. We keep ourselves safe. Uh, but here's the thing. The wood was changeless. Now, the gopher wood or the cypress wood uh, resisted decay. It's kind of like our cedar wood today. Uh, cedar posts, they're hard to rot. The animals and the bugs won't eat it. There's just something about it. And so it was resistant to decay and worms and termites. And so they took that wood and they put the pitch on it and it was the perfect wood. Jesus Christ had the perfect wood that the cross was made out of when he went to Calvary to bear our sin. Now, time and Satan's attacks have not changed the power of the old rugged cross. It's still the same today as it was back then. We still get saved through the old rugged cross. Amen? And so that hasn't changed. A lot of God's people who have been to the cross are still underwater because they're not coming to the cross. They're not trusting in Christ. They're not being obedient. That's how we keep our head above water. If you love me, he said, keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. And God promised to supply our needs and protect us and to take care of us. But we've got to do our part, do we not? And then think about all the food. Think about all the animals and all the food. And think about three sons and three daughters-in-laws and a wife eating all that food. And, and look at verse number 14, chapter 6. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark. So you've got these three levels, and these three levels have rooms. And I imagine over here they're probably storing the elephant food. In this little room, in that room, they're probably storing food for the family and what have you. And shall pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of it 50 cubits, the height of it 30 cubits. A window shalt thou make to the ark. And in a cubit, and finish it out above, and the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof, with lower, second, and third story shalt thou make it. So you got a three-story boat, an ark, that's got rooms in it to put animals, to put food, to put everything that it needs. And God's got it made to be just what they needed so that they could take this journey. Uh, the rooms... I would guess the, the, the animals were in the bottom floor. I mean, it'd be tough to have an elephant on the third floor uh, of the ark. I don't know. But a lot of God's people, we have been fed physically and emotionally and spiritually, and we still find ourselves drowning because we don't put our trust in what God has given us. Then there was the finish of it, and that is that it was made with pitch within and without to protect it, to to, it's kind of a plaster or a resin or a slime, as we said earlier. Uh, and they put it there. And back in that day, they didn't know what all that stuff was. Noah didn't understand all those things. He didn't know what an ark was. He didn't know, I mean, but God gave it to him. I was reading through uh, Exodus and Leviticus. I'm in Leviticus, Leviticus now. But when they built the temple, God gave them the Holy Spirit at that time to, to, to do the work that they need to do. So how they can work with gold and how they can work with bronze and all those things. God gave, and that's the same thing with Noah. Mm -hmm. God gave him the plans and told him how to do it. And it's the same thing with you and I. God has given us the plans. What he wants from us. We just won't follow the instructions. But God has given it to us. We can do the things that God's commanded us. 
And so secondly, the ark was a place of sufficiency. It was all sufficient. Anybody know of a verse in the Bible that says, my God is all sufficient? <laughs> able to supply our needs, able to take care of us. God was able to take care of them. Uh, I said a minute ago, the word fashion is to give the proper fitting and the measurements and, and the custom and the manners of the plan. God gave it to him right down to the final details. Salvation that you and I enjoy was not an afterthought with God. It didn't say, you know what, we're going to destroy the earth. What are we going to do? How are we going to, we need to come up with a plan. No, the Bible says in Ephesians 1 and 1 Peter 1, from the foundations of the world, God already had that plan in place. God already knew how it was going to take place. Now, I'm not God, and I don't know all things, but I don't understand how God could know that he was going to put Adam Eve in the garden, they were going to sin, and he was going to have to send his son. Why he would do that, but that's God. He understands all that. I don't, I'm not going to question it. But you notice the design in verse 15. 300 cubits long. That's 450 feet. Now let me just give you an idea. This building is 100 feet by 70. So the ark was this building, three more buildings, and a half of this building. 450 feet long. That's a long boat. Yeah. And, and uh, him and his sons to build all that. Then you notice it says that it was, uh, the breadth of it was 50 cubits. That's 75 feet wide. It was 5 feet wider than this building. Now you look at our building and you think of all the rooms that we have on this one floor. It had three floors. 75 feet wide. And then the height of it was to be 30 cubits or 45 feet high. From here to that peak right there is 28 more, 25 feet. So it's another 20 feet above that. If you can picture that. With a door in the side of it. So that means each floor was probably somewhere around 15 feet high. Kind of a little higher, maybe right to the chandeliers or so. And they built that with no Home Depot and no Lowe's and no tools and no nothing. And it took on all the animals and all the food and the family and it floated 150 plus days and just kept on going and going. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. I can't wait to get to heaven to meet Noah. Yeah. Talk to him about that. I don't know if we will, but it, it was just an amazing thing. Now, I know in, in Kentucky they built one that's supposed to be the same dimensions and everything, and someday when I get rich, I'll go up there and view it. My dad sent me a hat from there. He got to see it before he died. But they say it's, it's awesome. And so maybe someday we'll make a, instead of doing a cruise ship trip, we'll do a trip to the Noah's Ark. But, and, and you know, I was listening to a preacher this week. They were talking about, wouldn't it be awesome if they found Noah's Ark on Mount Ararat before the Lord came back? Yeah. How, how that would open up the, the scriptures being true. I know they say they have and everything. But, but the third thing I want you to notice is the Ark was a place of summons. The window, the door, the plan of God, what was all that to do? It was to summon people to come in to be saved. Now, Noah preached the whole time he was building the ark. He warned people, he told them that the flood was coming, that they needed to get ready. But nobody listened. Mm -hmm. Nobody wanted to hear it. They were marrying and giving in marriage and eating and drinking and having a good time and partying. And, and even when this big old monstrosity, can you imagine... This thing being built, and people, you know, people had to probably laugh at him, mock him like they do us today. Look at that old man. He's been working on that thing 30 or 40 years. Keeps thinking there's a flood coming, and, and oh, man, you know, and laugh. But they do the same thing to us today. We tell people that the Lord's coming back. We tell people that uh, they're going to die and spend eternity in hell if they don't trust Christ, and they do the same thing to us. We preach. Preach the gospel, preach the people, give them the truth, and the same thing happens with them. There was a door and a window. The window was a summons to come in. I mean, the door was a summons to come in. It was open. It was a single door and a side. Mm -hmm. John 10, 9. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out, and find passion. 
And so the ark was a picture of Christ. The door was a picture of Christ being the door to come in for safety, to come in for salvation. It was on the side. John 19, 34. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. The span of the, the door. There was a lower and a second and a, a third layer. Somehow that door had to be able to, to get up to there. I don't know if maybe when the door came down, it went all the way up from the top, and then the level you could get over. I don't know how it was, but somehow you had to get everything in there. Huh? Could have been a ladder, but it says a door. I don't know. But it appeared that it would span all the levels because God had to close it. Noah couldn't close it, amen? But it kind of represents the, the Trinity. Three levels. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. There's three levels of the Trinity. The, the window above was 18 inches, one cubit. That's not a very big window. I'm probably wider than 18 inches. I'm sure Noah's a little narrower at the shoulders. But he got up there and opened the window to let the raven out, to let the dove out. And I would imagine, because I think I read over here where the window was, was closed so that Noah couldn't look out and see all that was going on. I think that's why God put it at the top. So that Noah was always looking up. So Noah kept his head up above the water. So Noah would always look up to God. You and I ought to be looking up. Our heads ought to be looking up. We ought to be looking unto the author and finisher of our faith, the Lord Jesus Christ. Looking up to heaven. Looking up to see where he's at. The, the window brought in light. Somehow. I mean, if you've got all this pitch within and without, and you've got those three levels... There's no light in there other than the window. Now, I don't know if, if in the middle of that it was opened up where the light could come in and shine through it. I don't know. Or if they had lanterns, it doesn't say. But you picture being in there with all those animals and there's no light. Bumping into the skunk could get really, really... And I'm sure they had some type of light. Something for... But, but the, the window... God opened the window to you and I one day when Jesus came. Brother Lloyd used to sing, Go Close the Window, the song about God wanting the window closed so we didn't have to see his son die. Uh, the window was probably their source of ventilation. I mean, it sounds like that's all they had. Uh, the breath of God. I don't know. But that's where the birds were released. And, and, and that's how they knew that the ground... But here's the thing. God had control of the door, but Noah had control of the window. And he used that. And so Noah released the birds. The raven, kind of a type of uh, carnal man. You think of a raven. Dirty, nasty bird. Kind of does its own thing. The raven was let go and never came back. The dove was let go and came back because it didn't find any place. Then was let go again and came back with the little olive leaf and then went away and never came back because... The floods had dried up. And so, but the dove kind of shows you and I being spirit filled. The spirit is represented in the Bible by what? By a dove. The Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus in his baptism. And so, uh, God has designed the ark as a type of Christ that we can look at for that day compared to Christ for us today. And as we stand tonight with our heads bowed, no one looking around. Noah was not to look down at the devastation. He couldn't. You imagine if the boat was the, the, the window was in the middle of the boat and he was up there, he couldn't look down and see anything. 75 feet wide, 450 feet long. God didn't want him to see that. God wanted him to look up to him. And God wants you and I tonight to look up to heaven. Uh, don't look down tonight. There's nothing down there, amen? We need to keep our heads up. When the waters look high, when the dangers look high, when things look like they're coming to a, a rough time, we need to look up. Look up to our salvation. Look up to Jesus. He'll get us through. He'll get us over, will he not? He's our safety. He's our sufficiency. And he summons us to come up. We ought to be coming up every day closer to him. 
We ought to grow every day closer to Him. We ought to, and one of these days, He's going to say, come up hither, and we're going to go up. Amen? And we're going to be there in heaven. In the meantime, we need to look up. Maybe you're going through something tonight, and your head's underwater. Best way to keep your head above water is to look up. To look up to Jesus. Look up to the author and the finisher of our faith and put your trust in Him. Cast all your care on Him because He cares for you. That's what God wants us to do. And Noah was a perfect example of looking up to God. A perfect example of being obedient to God. Going into the ark. And God protected him and God saved him. And when he was in the ark, a picture of Christ, he was safe. And you and I today, if we're in Christ, we are safe. One day he's going to come back and he's going to take us home. Amen? Our Father, we love you tonight. We're grateful and thankful for your word. We're thankful for the ark that was a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're thankful that Noah and his family were able to get in the ark to be safe from the destruction that was upon the earth when God wiped off all life that was on the earth. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord and was protected. And tonight we found grace in our salvation through Jesus Christ. We know that we are in Him, and that we are safe, and I pray that you will help us to live <coughs> and to let our light shine through that window that this world might come to know you and to see you, and we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Well, thank you for being here Wednesday night, back in our study in the book of Luke. Have a good week. Pray for one another. Pray for our missionaries. Pray for the Millers.